Larry's coming through your telly. He's coming through your telly. He's coming through your phone. He's coming through your iPod. He's coming through your iPhone. He's coming. He's coming. Oh, Larry, he's coming to town. Da -da -dun -dun -da. Anyway, guys, it is Fog Entertainment here, back again with another movie review, and we are looking at Come Play. It was based on a short that they made all the way back in 2017. I said that as if it was like four million years ago. It was six years ago. Then they brought this movie out in 2020. I believe they did film this before the pandemic. Um. I mean, they could have filmed it during it. I just feel like you know stuff get put on hold for a while. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put bet my top money it came out or it was filmed before and then released during. But I think it is just a Netflix exclusive movie. But yeah, it, it is centered around an autistic kid named Oliver, played by Asi Robertson. We've got his ma played by Jillian Jacobs and his dad played by John Gallagher Jr. I'll be real, this cast doesn't really have an awful lot of star power. I mean, we just recently reviewed the other guys. That's got Samuel Jackson, you know, The Rock, Will Ferrell, Eva Mendes, Mark Wahlberg. This movie does not have none of that. I mean, I, I think some of the kid acting in it was good, but in terms of the actual quality of the movie, man, it's shite. But basically, I mean, for the minute, like, for as soon as the movie starts, the phone, there's like, you can see, like, the point of view of somebody in the phone, and basically... It's a children's story about this creature named Larry, and it's trying to befriend Oliver to take my hand, Ollie, to come back to his world. Ollie, though, um, he's kind of getting picked on at school. We begin to introduce a few kids by the name of Byron, who turns out to be his best man, his best friend later. We get Matteo, and we've got Sack, but you know, Oliver's having troubles. He's autistic. I mean, what age are these kids? Four or five? I mean, like, they're like portrayed as like, you know, like seven, eight, but they're nowhere near the height of like the kids that are that age. You know, like these kids literally look like nursery. Nursery, preschool sort of age. They do not look like kids who are um you know, ready to lay the smack down, but we see uh basically Oliver he gets brought out by Mattel to the middle of the field, he kinda gets bullied and then Oliver has to speak through like apps on his through an app on his phone, so he's like Fuck you, Byron. Your mom stinks like shit. <laughs> Essentially, Byron pushes him to the ground. He drops his 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 uh his phone that he's been using, which I thought might have been his only f source of communication. But of course, he's found by Mother Sarah. Uh, her and the dad are like split up. His dad works as like a like a parking meter, a car park. He just works in the middle of a car park. It's so fucking random. It's like it's not like you know, at the entrance to a car park or the entrance to, like, a venue. It's literally just in the middle of a car park. I mean, it's fucking... I mean, it does make for, for some uh, creepy visuals as the movie goes on, but Sarah, she doesn't really think too much of this, but then she, like, organises, like, all those kids that, was, that were bullying her son to come over, which is kind of just weird why this would even happen, but, yeah, they'll come over. Oliver basically tries to explain to them that he's had a few run-ins with this wee Larry man, and then Larry... Flips a table, the kids shite themselves, the, their parents are called. Sarah's like she's no idea what's going on. And then the kids essentially blame Oliver. It was Oliver. But again, like, I mean, if these four year olds turn around and say, no, it was some fucking creepy pasta that's in Oliver's phone, are the parents going to believe that? But then Sarah believes it. And Marty's like, you know what, actually. I'm not believing this. So the dad's like, I'm not really believing this pish. So he decides to take Oliver to work with him. And Oliver, of course, brings his phone. And this is where Larry comes out, man. And he comes out inside the fucking wee pod that they're in at the car park. Marty near gets battered. There's, Oliver's getting picked up in the air, choked out. And then Marty escapes with Oliver. Then when Marty's alone in the car park pod uh, later on in the, in the film... The fucking Larry comes after him. This is actually a pretty well done scene where you've got like all the lights going out and he gets surrounded and he manages to lock Larry in. But again, like what is it? Is he supernatural? Is it a ghost? Or is it like, is he, is it real? You know, I know it's obviously a stupid concept to begin with, but it's like, well, what the fuck is it like? You know? Of course, it is kind of just weird at that point. And then as Marty's driving home, he gets fucked, his car gets flipped. I was actually thinking he was going to die, but it turns out Marty's no deed. He's just in like a, 
and then just coma. He's unconscious, unconscious at the minute, but you know he'll wake up soon enough. Uh, Oliver though is took back to the house with Sarah. He's kind of freaking out. What's going on? But he kind of pats his thing up with we Byron. Byron's like, oh, I was told not to be your friend. And he's like, let's be friends again. Oh yeah, give me a hell yeah, brother. We Byron. But anyway, all of us like, ah, well, I don't know. So Sarah's like, right, we come back to me. And then this is when, like, the house just completely becomes, you know, haunted, obsessed with Big Larry. Larry's like, ah, oh, why not you? And then, like, as the lights go, it just, like, they did to Marty. Like, he actually enters the house. And we get to see him for, like, the first time. Like, of course, throughout the movie, we did see, like, wee glimpses of, like, you know, when they're using apps and the face scan he was appearing but here we like we do get to see him in his old glory he's still weird fucking like a wendigo type creature as i would uh describe him but you think that these two have escaped him but as they're running through the woods it turns out he comes through the tv the the, the screen of the phone that he lost earlier when he was getting bullied and he, he dropped it in the long grass and then after this oliver gets dragged and i tell you what right see this scene where it comes out and it starts running, it was fucking creepy, man. Sarah's greeting, Oliver gets caught, she's trying to find Oliver. Oliver then is left, he stands up, All big Larry comes from behind the tree, reaches his hand out, you think Oliver's going to touch his hand, but who does it? Sarah. Sarah touches his hand. Oh no, Sarah's going with Larry, I doesn't like it, Larry. She's like, I'll be your friend, Larry. Bow, 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 bow. Then, yeah. Sarah is taken away, Oliver is found, Marty is back on his feet looking after him and um, when he's he comes down the stairs one night, Oliver is dancing with this invisible creature but when he looks through the face up from Marty, he sees that it's Sarah. So Sarah is kind of alive but kind of like a demonic creature now but she looks out over her son. Anyway, Larry's in the gear and uh, aye, creepy bastard but this movie, I mean, it was very cheap. It was alright, the plot was a bit thin, but, you know, still a creepy enough movie, but again, I think parts it was unbearable. But anyway guys, leave your thoughts down below, that's going to date here on Fog Entertainment, check out The Last of Us review later on for, uh, what's the, I don't even know what the episode's called, uh, just hold my hand or something. But aye, please hit the subscribe button while you're holding the hand, until then, Larry's going to get ye!